For several decades now, public service employees have been contributing to a pension scheme that offers value-added services like the microfinance and home ownership scheme. A pension scheme that guarantees a quality life and a secured future for members and their dependents after retirement. Committed to providing quality service through its nationwide presence. There is only one such pension scheme for public service employees. Public Service Pensions Fund, PSPF, keeping the pension promise. It's the 20th of September 2023. Welcome to Crown Television Grand News. You're watching us live on Top Star Channel 89 DTT and 543 on DTH. We are also live on Star Times application and Facebook. Remember that you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. We go by the name Crown TV Zambia. And meanwhile, whilst doing this program, you can be able to participate and send your letter to the president to the number 0979. 958392 and avoid vulgar language. Today's headlines. Members of Parliament will minister over FISP. <music> Government to intensify inspection of buildings to suit people with disability. Twenty-seven year old Mukushi woman stabbed during a fight with boyfriend. And now sports news crown TV Zambia secures football rights for Copper Queens versus Morocco. To present the news in detail, my name is Tandi Webanda Kavaso. Government has assured poor farmers that there are no immediate plans to phase the farmer input support, phase out the farmer input support program, FISP but rather improve its operations. Minister of Agriculture, Montolo Piri, says government has embarked on FISP reforms aimed at improving the implementation of the program through the Comprehensive Agriculture Support Transformation Program to guide the agriculture sector. He was speaking in parliament when he delivered a ministerial statement. The minister also adds that 91% of decomp and fertilizer procured by government has so far been delivered countrywide. And as for urea, no contract has been cancelled as delivery of the commodity has also started. Details in this report. It is not a secret that in Zambia the agricultural sector remains one of the key sectors in the country's economy. This is because it drives the food agenda, causing it to be at the core centre of many Zambians following the escalating prices of millimill. During the 2023 budget analysis prepared by the Parliamentary Budget Office, the Farmer Input Support Program, FACIP, was scaled up from 5.4 billion kwacha in 2022 to 9.1 billion kwacha in 2023. In Zambia, 1,024,434 farmers are dependent on the FACIP program. However, speculation of phasing out this program fueled a heated debate as members of parliament wanted to know why the Ministry of Agriculture was not giving a clear stance on the matter. 28th of July, 2023. The Honorable Minister of Agriculture came to this house with a ministerial statement. And in responding to a question posed to him by Honorable Menyani, here is what the minister said, and I quote This is where the FISIP is moving. 43 districts are on electronic voucher. And I would like to take this opportunity to say that Zambia should know that this FISIP is slowly going to erode. It is slowly going to be reduced. It is slowly going to be taken out. We are working towards giving cheap loans to farmers so that we can deal only with serious people. 
Madam Speaker, the Honorable Minister today comes and says there is no immediate plan of eliminating FISIP when earlier he had said FISIP is going. Madam Speaker, is a minister in order to contradict himself? The immediate is a plan. It's not the execution, it is a plan. But Minister of Agriculture Mutolopiri has maintained that government had no immediate intentions of phasing out the farmer input support program FISIP. He said government will rather work at improving its operations through the comprehensive agriculture support transformation program aimed at addressing limitations of FISIP. The government has no immediate intentions of phasing out FISIP. Rather, government is working on improving its operations. The targeted number of beneficiaries is the usual 1,024,434. Madam Speaker, in an effort to promote crop diversification as well as food and nutrition security, the government has widened the choice of crop on the program to include maize, soya beans, groundnuts, rice, common beans, cowpeas, sorghum, and sunflower seeds. The government procured 120,380.25 metric tons of compound D fertilizer, of which, Madam Speaker, 110,003.65 metric tons, which represents 91% of the D compound, Madam Speaker, has been delivered. For now, the debate on phasing out the FISI program may continue. This is the program which is known for the comprehensive agriculture support transformation program its effectiveness can only be known when it is tested in practice christine mapani crown tv news lusaka to help us analyze the fees reforms tonight we do have mr matthew ntavo who is young emerging farmers initiative board member good evening and welcome thank you so much um, we'll go straight to our question okay. What is your reaction to government's decision to improve the farmer input support program and rename it as the Comprehensive Agriculture Support Transformation Program? All right. Uh, so thanks very much. Um, uh, we, first, we want to mention that um, uh, the first time uh, this government came uh, into office, I think they, they mentioned the issue of uh, uh, basically transforming FISIP into CASIP. Uh, <clears throat> and we've been part of uh, the discussion around uh, how that transformation is going to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have um, been told and realized that uh, FISIP actually is just a, a component of, of uh, the Comprehensive Agriculture Transformation Program, mm -hmm. which is an investment uh, program that uh, I think that um, promotes that government should just provide an enabling environment. Mm -hmm for the private sector to invest uh, in agriculture. And so we have seen over time um, uh, what FISIP has been that um, um, it's, it's a subsidy basically. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that subsidy where you pay uh, a 400 mm -hmm. and accept, uh, expect that government is going to, um, to pay something uh, about 9,500. And uh, the, the problem has been uh, at the end of the day, um, on the pricing. Mm -hmm. So it's not every farmer uh, that uh, uh, has benefited from FISIP who sells their products, for example, FRA. And so uh, the, the pricing has been, ha has been disturbed. And also, um, you realize that actually um, everything free, uh, they have a cost. So mm -hmm. uh, FISIP has as from the farming um, point of view, has always distorted the market. And so uh, when we talk about the comprehensive um, um, uh, agriculture uh, program, I think it is looking at a broader aspect. All the, all the complaints, all the uh, challenges, I think uh, CASIP is trying to address the, the overall picture. Okay, so looking at the aspect of being efficient, do you think a credit window through the Comprehensive Agriculture Support Transformation Program to be implemented by government will be more effective? 
Um, so when we talk about the uh, credit window, uh, which is um, over time uh, from our end, we've always mm -hmm. said, you know, um, uh, farming is not cheap. And so um, we need, we need a, a credit facility. Mm -hmm. And uh, through CASIP, I think there's a, a deliberate uh, um, a program and an institution actually that is supposed to be created to uh, ensure that, you know, farmers have where they could access uh, our finances um, at competitive um, uh, um, uh, cost. Mm -hmm. So that means that um, uh, it will not only depend on, uh, farmers will not only depend on um, uh, FISIP, where the, the things are, di um, are subsidized, but will be able to borrow, okay? You may, uh, you may have to borrow uh, for the sake of uh, uh, the input mm -hmm. and maybe seed and all that and then be able to pay back. We think that that model um, would work mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, as I said, that um, uh, free things will not mm -hmm. always work because, you know, when you are given things for free, mm -hmm. you can squander it and uh, still more, you will not get, you, you are not disturbed by by anything, but where you have you have an input, uh, you have borrowed, you know you you have an obligation to pay back. You put more effort, mm -hmm. and I think that um, uh, we we need to move away from uh, over dependence on on government if we have to invest more in agriculture. Uh, FISI, for example, has been limiting how uh, the the kind of area you're able to uh, to, to to develop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think less than uh, five hectares. If you are more than five hectares, it means that uh, you are not eligible. Mm -hmm. So that uh, encourages investment in agriculture. So uh, we expect it to be more efficient. Thank you for enlightening us on that. So indeed, I was getting to more efficient. Will it be more efficient? Yes, no? Yes, yes should. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to hear from you soon. We well, appreciate it. That was Mr. Matthew Ntavo, who is Young Emerging Farmers Initiative board member, just highlighting more concerning the FISP reforms. Moving on, expert findings suggest that little knowledge regarding various methods of contraception has led to most women in Zambia to shun the utilization of female condoms. Some women talked to by Crown TV in the Sarkis Chawama area lack the interest in adopting female condoms as a family planning option. Rhoda Piri, a resident in Nusaka's Chawama Township, says despite having the idea of how a female condom should be used, she's still skeptical about adopting it as an option for family planning because the process of using the condom seems complex. And sexual reproductive health and rights country director Ms. Lenganji Nanyangwe has called for the redesign of female condoms as most women find the current design too complex to understand. According to civil society organization research, a total of 86,890 male condoms were distributed to Zambian health facilities as compared to 811 female condoms in the years 2018 to 2019. Therein lies the challenge of contraceptives. Expanding contraceptive method choices for sexually active youths is critical to prevent STIs and unintended pregnancies. However, preferences and decision-making around contraception among young adults are not well understood. Globally, 214 million women experience an unmet need for family planning with over 100 million citing method-related reasons for non-use of modern contraceptives. Crown TV spoke to women aged between 18 to 30 on their uptake of female condoms and these were their views. Female condoms, I buy you some apple, and then I buy you apple. So she could share me the I buy you some apple, buy you some apple, man, you can buy a cake, na. Yana ni yo fe ni azeleti, kuti minga shte inseti, wau kuna kumala na mamu na vi ya ya mani yo fe pali. Because when I'm parried, the process will again is a maybe I'm a forcing a change in my cut. That's why my female condoms. You know, my own chain can be used now. You know, my female condoms. You know, my own apple. Since when I'm wearing it, 
A visit to a pharmacy in Lusaka's business district has proved that even these outlets rarely stock female condoms. Condoms is one way to prevent yourself from getting any STI or an unwanted pregnancy. However, do female condoms get stocked as much as male condoms do? We have checked in various health facilities and we do know for a fact that more male condoms are distributed. But is that the case with pharmacies as well? I'm here in a pharmacy trying to find out the situation when it comes to supplies of female condoms. Do pharmacies stock female condoms? Let us find out. Like, uh, it's something that people have no idea of, most especially that uh, it's not much talked about or sensitized. So the last time we had condom, that was in 2017, and what we ordered, everything we bought expired, it went to waste. Yeah, but the male condoms. The male, the male condoms are sold in the first movie. It's known, like, but it's kind of a brand. So, okay, this one is nice, this one is nice. I think by my female condoms, the thing is, I think I'll forget more emphasis. Because, you know, if you ask me how do you do it, how do you do it? Now, I'm going to guess, you know, because it's something that from a Facebook, from a social media, like, it's everywhere. So, the low uptake of female condoms borders on ignorance. However, the right information regarding this type of contraceptive may help change the narrative. Before you open, first of all, you wash your hands, mm -hmm. like any procedure. Then you get the female condom. There are these zigzaggy thing at the end, mm -hmm. on two sides, on both sides. There are the like, zigzag thing. Mm -hmm. So you push the condom on the like this, you push it a bit, mm -hmm. just to leave room for tearing the condom. Yeah. Yes. Then here, as you can see, there are two more. Yes, mm -hmm. where you can cut. Mm -hmm. It's even indicated where to cut, so you can just simply cut it like this. Mm -hmm. So this is how it looks like. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. This side is bigger, then this side yeah. is small. Mm -hmm. So this will be outside the vagina. Mm -hmm. Yes, on the private part, this will be outside. Then this thing goes inside. Mm -hmm. Then how to use it? You hold it like this. Like this. You make an eight. Have you seen? Okay. So it's this that has to be an eight? Yes, yes, okay. yes. You yeah. make an eight like this. You just twist it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then the woman should squat. The girl, the lady, they should mm -hmm. squat. Then insert this inside be like this. Mm -hmm. Here it has entered inside, then this will be outside. Mm -hmm. So it will be maybe like this. Then it, you need to guide it so that it's like this. Okay. Then this female condom can be worn eight hours before the before the act the, the act. Yes. So the woman can put it maybe eight hours before and it follows the temperature of the skin. Sexual Reproductive Health and Rights Country Director Ms. Lenganjina Nyangwe attributes the lack of interest in the contraceptive to cultural beliefs surrounding the female condom. Socially, even culturally, as a woman, what are you doing with the condom? Society will ask. Are you promiscuous? Why are you moving around with the condom in your in your handbag. The connotation that moving with a condom entails that you are a loose person, you sleep around. And therefore the stigma that surrounds the condom, particularly the female condom, um, makes it difficult for a woman to even have it in her bag. Hoping that the design of the condom might be looked at, the female condom in this, in this instance would be looked at, so that it's a bit more um, more attractive and easy to use for a woman because I think it's a bit awkward and I don't know how many women actually even know how to use this. Especially social, cultural, religious norms stand in the way 
of a woman even using this uh, this product. Modern contraceptive use remains an important public health intervention to reducing maternal mortality and averting unwanted pregnancies. Factors such as age, marital status, religion and education levels remain significant issues in determining modern contraceptive among women. Factors such as marital status, religion, factors such as marital status, age, religion and education levels remain significant issues in determining modern contraceptive use among women. Hence, Concerted efforts are required to increase the use of female condoms by addressing these determinants. Daisy Mulenga, Crown TV News, Lusaka. Now, contraception is a popular topic among sexually active women, and choosing a contraceptive method may be a bit challenging for women. So joining us tonight on the news desk is Daisy Mulenga, who will help us understand exactly what is on the ground concerning female condoms and how often do they use them. Good evening and welcome. Good evening, thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad you chose a topic concerning women and I'd like you to describe what the uptake is exactly of the female condoms amongst Zambians currently. All right, um, Tandiwa, thank you so much. Actually, what inspired that um, story is based mm -hmm. on my own attitude towards mm -hmm. what we're talking about. And so I thought, I'm like, you know what? I think if I have this attitude towards this, probably a lot others have. Mm -hmm. And that's how I decided to embark on this particular story. Mm -hmm. Now, truth be told, I actually thought I'm the only one that was ignorant about female condoms. But it turns out that there's actually a very low uptake, even just in the communities as well. Now, what is engineering this particular um, issue is the fact that there's ignorance. Let me mm -hmm. just say ignorance. There's ignorance. Most people don't know how to use the female condoms, but also even those that know how to use them, they end up not using them because according to them, it's a complex um, process. I mean, you know how sex is, mm -hmm. right? So you can't, I think we saw what the nurse was doing for you to, it's a lot of work anyway, according to them. Mm -hmm. But also the other thing that pretty much um, is proof to say there's low uptake, even distributions in terms of distributing condoms in health facilities. Mm -hmm. um, statistics have shown that they, they prioritize male condoms as opposed to female condoms. Mm -hmm. Males get to have so many condoms and then the females get very little condoms. So that shows that obviously there's, there's a lag in balance, but also it's about are the women willing to, 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 to take these contraceptives? And the answer is no. So we're trying to see if uh, we can change the narrative. Okay, so I see you intentionally based your report on perspective of females mm -hmm. did you speak to some men what is their, their what, what what's their stance all right so most men anyway they said um why should i let a woman take the lead mm -hmm. when i can that was the popular opinion from the guys mm -hmm. but i was privileged to come across a man that stood out for me and he's never come across female condoms either he's a married man but then he said you know what with what you have told me right now mm -hmm. about female condoms there's no harm in us um bringing in variety of contraceptives mm -hmm. he also made mention to say other contraceptives like the pills the injections they uh, I don't want to use the word deteriorate. They make the hormone, hormones in the female's body be so imbalanced. Mm -hmm. So he said, if female condoms are the way to go and they help out, let them do so. But also the, big, the bigger thing that stood out is he brought in the issues of Vanachim Bosa. Mm -hmm. They should also be incorporating these topics, even as they teach women, uh, preparing them for marriage. Maybe we can take a look at this particular clip. As youth. Even those who are younger than us, they are practicing this. At that time, you can't find a young boy of 15 years talking about sex. It was not there. So because of our traditions, it also it has contributed. Because this time, it's modern. Whether like it or not, that's the fact. They should introduce this issues to Vanachimbu Sunday like as they are preparing a woman to go for a marriage. So 
So in summary, Daisy, word on the streets concerning female condoms as you leave? All right, so I think what I can say in terms of uh, word on the street, obviously, we lack knowledge, but mm -hmm. that is why we're here. And um, I'm very positive that this particular clip or package has helped one or two people to change their narratives when it comes to female condoms. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Moving on in the news tonight, government says it's working with Zambia agencies for persons with disabilities, ZAPD, to inspect all buildings, including government offices, to ensure that they are accessible to persons living with disabilities. Speaking in Parliament today, Acting Minister of Community Development and Social Services, Gary Nkombo, said findings from the officers who have been tasked to inspect buildings will be reported to the ministry in order to enhance compliance. The minister was responding to question, the question raised by Chinsali Member of Parliament, Kalalwe Mukosa, who wanted to know the measures government is taking to ensure that all buildings and government offices are accessible to persons with disabilities. Details in this report. According to the parliamentary report of the Committee on National Guidance and Gender Matters for the first session of the 13th National Assembly, majority of women and girls with disabilities in Zambia are excluded from several entitlements and services such as education, health care and employment. This exclusion was contrary to Article 6 of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which urges state parties to take all appropriate measures to ensure that women and girls with disabilities enjoy full rights and freedoms. Section 21 of the Persons with Disabilities Act No. 6 of 2012, which states that 1. The Minister shall, in collaboration with the agency and other state institutions, whenever they are developing and implementing national policies and plans, progressively strive to achieve equalization of opportunities for and integration of persons with disabilities in social and economic structures of society. This report also outlines the lack of user-friendly environments that is contributing to the lack of universal access in the structural buildings because of lack of ramps, rails, slides, sanitary facilities, among others. This matter was a subject of debate in Parliament as Chinsali Member of Parliament Kalalwe Mukosa wanted to know the measures government is taking to ensure that all government offices and buildings are made accessible to persons with disabilities. Most of the government uh, buildings in Chinsali, with an exception of uh, the recently constructed ones, they don't have accessibility of uh, those who have uh, disabilities, just, as, just like um, in many other areas. For example, the, uh, the police cells at Baumora, Chilenje police cells, most of the buildings. So in his response, Acting Minister of Community Development and Social Services, Garin Kombo, says the ministry is working with the Zambia Agency for Persons with Disabilities, ZAPID, to inspect all buildings, including government offices, to ensure that they are accessible to persons with disabilities. The agency prescribes universal design in the development standards and guidelines for the public building. To this effect, ZAPID has appointed inspectors um, in every province who are mandated to inspect all buildings, including government offices, in order to ensure that they are accessible to persons with disabilities. Two, the government through the ZAPID, um, with support of the International Labor Organization, is in the process of developing accessibility standards for Zambia. In Zambia, about 2 million men and women representing 15% of the population, standing at 19 million, has a disability. These people who rely on lawmakers to alleviate challenges they face in their various aspects of life, such as in education, agriculture, access to justice, and socio-economic development. Christine Mapani, Crown TV News, Lusaka. Now, disability is not inability. And joining us tonight is our, one of our reporters, Christine Mapani, who will help us, more, uh, who will help us dissect more on the Disabilities Act number no. 6 of 2012, and she'll be able to tell us how effective it has been thus far. Good evening and welcome. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. So diving straight into it, Persons with Disabilities Act number no. 6 of 2012, how effective has this act been? 
Right, so I'll just start by highlighting the fact that uh, when it comes to laws mm -hmm. to do with disabilities in our country, we do not necessarily have a challenge in that mm -hmm. area because we do have policies and laws that look after persons with disabilities mm -hmm. and the Disability Act number 6 of 2012 that you've just highlighted actually talks about the rights of persons with disabilities when it comes to education, when it comes to social services like education, mm -hmm. healthcare services, all those issues are highlighted in this law. Now the question mainly uh, Tandio has been when it comes to implementation of, mm -hmm. of, of these laws, we know for the fact that even today when you go out in most public institutions mm -hmm. right now, you discover that very few of them, if not all of them, actually do have uh, services that can accommodate or an environment that can actually accommodate persons with disabilities and one of them is that of RAMS. Mm -hmm. You discover that when you go to a public institution, I'll give an example of maybe the passport office you find that there are stairs there, but there's, there's no lifts there. Mm -hmm. There are no ramps there to accommodate persons with disabilities. So you find that it's very difficult for them to access certain services. But also to also highlight uh, in health institutions, you mm -hmm. find that it's also difficult when you go to a clinic today to find uh, friendly environments that to accommodate persons with disabilities. So mainly it's, it's not about the law, but it's actually about implementing the law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you feel that this, this act is effective? Uh, when you look at most of the buildings mm -hmm. or the facilities and institutions that we have, I would say it's not effective because mm -hmm. it does not accommodate and it does not create an environment for persons with disabilities. Okay, so in your own observation, uh, what are some of the noticeable challenges that persons with disabilities have been faced with that hinder their growth and participation in society? Because we do believe that disability should not be an inability. Right, and you, now you know that uh, the fact that, like you've mentioned, that the person is disabled doesn't mean they can't participate mm -hmm. in various activities that take place in the community. Mm -hmm. I also talked about in the beginning about the fact that there are no friendly environments in hospitals mm -hmm. for people to actually have access maybe to sexually reproductive health and various services that they, these persons with disabilities may need. But also, I would also mention that apart from buildings and institutions, another issue that uh, we can talk about is that of mobility. Mm -hmm. you discover that when you get on us today, you rarely see uh, uh, um, initiatives that are deliberately created to accommodate persons with disabilities, which makes it difficult actually mm -hmm. for these people living with disabilities. Now to talk about this phase, I did have uh, an interaction with uh, persons with dis disabilities and that is a young initiative for persons with disabilities who is also the executive director Ian Banda and this is what he had to say. As the Youth in Action for Disability Inclusion of Zambia, you agree with me that even government and the community must be aware on issues of promoting accessibility and mobility to our persons with disabilities. And the Persons with Disabilities Act of number 6 of 2012 is very much clear in ensuring that all public buildings, uh, transport, must be accessible to persons with disabilities. However, it's a challenge for us as persons with disabilities to participate in many of our community development programs, our economic empowerment program, because access denies us in accessing the different uh, buildings and public use of uh, transport. Our call is to the Minister of Transport and Government in ensuring the modification and adaptability of accessibility modes uh, and the buildings, including the public use of transport, which must be accessible to uh, persons with disabilities. You also agree with me that through the Minister of Transport, um, there must be need that the all importation vehicles, public buses, must be imported with a wheelchair access to suit the needs of our persons with disabilities to access the public buses, which uh, we feel it's a human rights issue. To persons with disabilities, we feel it has been a challenge because most of the time when we want to move from one place to another, we need private uh, cars, which are quite a cost to us as persons with disabilities. We feel if public uh, transport will be accessible to persons with disabilities, there will be lessened cost to our persons with disabilities. We do take our first set of commercials to join us with more news items after this break.
As we go about our everyday business, let us remind ourselves about the importance and value of life. Let's stay alive and look out for each other on the road. Road safety is a shared responsibility. Just like we share the roads, we need a multi-sectoral approach that requires the engagement of all stakeholders. Join hands and make a pledge. I, Dr. Siatwambo, pledge not to drive at excessive speeds. My name is Siruan Badamia, and I pledge to report or broken down here cause and traffic violations in the road traffic Transport and safety agency. I pledge not to do harm to oneself nor others. I am Eric Kasomo Jr., chairman of the National Theatre Arts Association of Zambia, and I pledge not to use a phone on the road. Let us pledge to make a difference. Let us pledge to make a change. Let us pledge to save lives. Together we can save millions of lives. Be road smart because life is precious. For several decades now, public service employees have been contributing to a pension scheme that offers value-added services like the microfinance and home ownership scheme. A pension scheme that guarantees a quality life and a secured future for members and their dependents after retirement. Committed to providing quality service through its nationwide presence. There is only one such pension scheme for public service employees. Public Service Pensions Fund, PSPF. Keeping the pension promise. Go all out for football and refresh yourself with Topster. For only 160 kwacha antenna classic or dish smart, keep up with the competitive Russian Saudi Pro League on wild football and witness football giants Cristiano Ronaldo, Sadio Mane, Karim Benzema, and Zambia's star Fashion Sakala as they battle it out for the ultimate glory this season. Enjoy each weekend with amazing goals from the Saudi superstars. Go on and link up with the Bundesliga and watch Hurricane's scoring spree in his new shirt for Bayern Munich every March day live on Topster Sports Channels. But there's more. Spice up your September viewing menu with the latest Filipino series Love in 40 Days starting on the 25th on Novella E Plus at 2040 hours. Don't forget to test your smartness by watching new episodes of Pungwa every Sunday at 19 hours also on Novella E Plus. Follow the Topster Facebook page for latest football fixtures and exciting content. Subscribe now. Topster, enjoy digital life. Are you looking for a place that sells fresh, healthy vegetables and fish? Well, look no further because New Roberts Fish and Veg Limited has what you are looking for. We have a wide variety of healthy products to satisfy your taste buds and help you in your healthy journey. We have a fully stocked butchery. Farm-produced vegetables and live fish. Yes, you heard me correctly. For that guaranteed freshness. So what are you still waiting for? Call 0976 543 822 or 0955 108 708 or 0965-691-909 or visit Chilenje, which is behind Total Gas Station. Because at New Roberts Fish and Veg Limited, we believe only fresh foods are good enough for you.
Uza dua zikawa na iwe tian kulangi zetu ere tian na manga oku. Mary, bora usare apa face. Hmm, banda toire tiri cleani. Manga somo mtendera mo tiri di. Woi akatoire tsko dola woi. Uka siriza che ku manga. Water connection ni 175. Water connection 175. Nishwa za kuta connect woi nishwa za nkala nayo toire ti. Ifu na bonse kuno bantu ku mtendera wankare connected di. Ni wandan ba mina wachita connect. Get connected to the Lusaka Water and Sanitation Network in Tendere. For more information, visit the Lusaka Water and Sanitation Office opposite Indian Filling Station at PHI Mall. This project is supported by the Millennium Challenge Corporation. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. After a growing tension between Cabinet Office and former President Edgar Lungu, government has announced that the two offices are already in talks to end the existing tension. Speaking when he addressed the media, Ministry of Information and Media Director Spokesperson Tabo Kawana says the two offices are looking at mineralities to reconcile. On Sunday, Edgar Lungu sought to leave for the Lusaka High Court to commence judicial review proceedings against the state's decision to stop him from traveling, but he withdrew the case on Monday on grounds that the court had set September 25th for the hearing of the case when the conference he was supposed to attend would end on September 20th. Despite calls from Parliament Chief Mpazani suggesting that President Haga Inde Hichinama and his predecessor Edgar Lungu should find some common grounds and reconcile, the advice from the traditional leaders seemed to be falling on deaf ears. Former President Edgar Lungu, through his lawyers yesterday, went ahead and gave the state a two-day ultimatum to make amends to its refusal to allow him to travel to South Korea, further to which he will commence a court proceeding against it. On Sunday, Lungu sought leave of the Rusaka High Court to commence judicial review proceedings against the state's decision, but he withdrew the case on Monday that the court had said September 25th for the hearing of the case when the conference he was supposed to attend would end on September 20th. Recently, Chief Mpezani said politicians shouldn't involve foreign agents in internal fights that only bring shame to the nation. When he addressed the media on Monday, Chief Mpezani said those close to Lungu and President Hichilema shouldn't pit them against each other because it was wrong. It was during this briefing when the traditional leader stated that President Lungu did his part and he should allow his friend also to do his part so that this country move on. In a special briefing today, Information and Media Director Spokesperson Tamo Kabwana said the office of the 6th Republican President and that of Cabinet are already in talks, saying that the tension between the two offices will be resolved. I am very sure because the office of the 6th Republican President and that of Cabinet are in active talks and therefore uh, outside the way forward, there is no other way. Whatever happens, an outcome will be there. So the, the two offices are involved. Remember that the parent office of the office of the former president is cabinet office. So the parent office is uh, taking care of whatever issues that are arising within the office of the former president and the way forward. Uh, In October 2022, then Patriotic Front PF Acting Secretary General Nixon Chilangwa said former Republican President Edgar Lungu will only reconcile with President Hichilema if he stops lying. This followed a call by Catholic priest Godwin Mlenga, who urged Mr. Lungu and President Hichilema to put their differences aside and set a tone for peace and unity in the country. Zambians are now looking forward to the two leaders coming together amid high costs of living and high costs of the step of food. Blessings Mkandewe reporting, Crown TV News. Lusaka. In other news stories, the Zambia Debt Alliance says the sustainable and unconcluded debt talks between Zambia and the bilateral creditors may affect the implementation of the 2024 national budget as the country will be at 
and certain of the debt repayment allocation funds to be given. ZDA coordinator Peter Mumba says the budget process will be affected as the exchange rate will remain high. This means the prices of essential commodities will keep on skyrocketing on the market. And an economist, Emmanuel Zulu, says it is a problem as the country is not sure exactly how much money government will be paying in regard to debt relief. While some external bilateral creditors have agreed on restructuring Zambia's debt, the nitty-gritty of the debt relief is yet to be worked out. For the bondholders who are the private external creditors, Discussions on a debt restructuring are yet to commence. But the bottom line is that the International Monetary Fund is happy with the hold on the external debt repayment as the external debt is undergoing restructuring. This, however, puts the national budget planning on a speculative mode. Finance Minister Dr. Stumbekom Sokotwane is on 29 September 2023 expected to present to Parliament the 2024 national budget for discussion. This is, however, without knowing the debt servicing amount on the bilateral and private bondholders will demand. Economist Emmanuel Zulu says that there is uncertainty in the amount of funds that will be allocated to the debt servicing in the 2024 national budget as the state of the private creditors is unknown. The danger is that uh, if we do not actually get to conclude the debt negotiations, uh, especially with the uh, private creditors, uh, this will imply that um, government will be so uncertain, I think, with regards to debt repayment um, allocation you know, in the 2024 budget. So we hoped that uh, probably we would have a clear figure of how much will go towards debt servicing. But uh, in the absence of conclusion of debt negotiations and, uh, you know, more especially with the private creditors, uh, we are not so sure of, uh, you know, how much um, the relief we are going to get. So I think the government will treat it as it is in that uh, there hasn't been any relief that has uh, come through from the private creditors yet. The Zambia Debt Alliance coordinator Peter Mumba says without knowing the debt service amount, the exchange rates will continue being unstable and this will have a direct impact on the essential commodities on the market. So what this essentially means is that you know, if we haven't yet reached a conclusion in terms of our debt restructuring efforts, we may not really see the full benefits of this uh, entire process and uh, some, of the, you know, some of the downsides to this will just be seen in our exchange rate. We know how our exchange rate has been responding negatively to you know, negative sentiments uh, you know, surrounding debt restructuring. So I think you know, the prolonged uh, nature of this uh, whole process may speak negatively to our exchange rate. And we also know how our exchange rate fits uh, positively as well into our, or rather directly, into our cost of living. So we might see the cost of living you know, remain high on the high side, especially if we don't um, you know, yet to conclude on a debt restructuring uh, plan. Otherwise, in the absence of that, we may still uh, be in a situation where we continue to accrue interest arrears as we wait for this entire process uh, to be con concluded. So our only hope is that before the end of this month, government and the private creditors will have, you know, uh, you know what, uh, uh, are going to have a dialogue, are going to sit down and discuss the finalization uh, of Zambia's debt restructuring uh, plans. For 2023, about 18.2 billion kwacha is expected to be spent on a servicing external debt, but with an unstable exchange rate, the amount in kwacha may rise. Staubisim Chimba, reporting for Crown TV News in Lusaka. Meanwhile, a 27-year-old woman of Mukushi Tala has been hospitalized at District Hospital after she allegedly got stabbed during a fight with a 26-year-old boyfriend. Crown TV News visited the victim at the hospital who did not disclose the cause of the fight but mentioned that she got a knife as her weapon, but in the process it worked against her. Meanwhile, Chirefi Award Councillor Christopher Mutale has since advised residents to desist from engaging in such fights as they have the potential to end life. Let's get the details. She has been in the hospital for two days now. Hospitalized at Mukushi District Hospital, this was after a fight with a 26-year-old boyfriend of Itana Compound. 
Harriet Muma explained to Crown Television News that during a fight where she did not mention the cause, she picked up a knife as her weapon, but in the process the weapon worked against her. <laughs> The 27-year-old victim said she is currently feeling better but just wanted to relocate to the copper belt. One would ask the intentions of the victim grabbing a knife. If what I'm thinking is what you're thinking, then this incident would have been worse than it is now. Or may I simply say, if she succeeded to stab her boyfriend, maybe death would have been recorded. Meanwhile, Chief of Ward Councillor Christopher Mutale gave an advice to members of the public in relation to this matter. Uh, we have cases, different cases of assaults, uh, snapped people in Itala, FTC, uh, in the Kotazala, or areas of the town here in Bush. Uh, to, to some of the community members, let us not take laws into our own hands. Let us make sure that um, if in Toro Fiaisa, Amafero Yaisa, ten people of Chukchi to report all, Oko, Kumine, then Okuraisa for even it was in the Amafio Minomius, Amokuma want to own a career, different shilling. You may wish to know that such cases have sent individuals to the grave in the district. Joseph Siambehi Crown, TV News, Makoshi, in the central province. Moving on to a segment in our news that we call Letter to the President. Remember that you too can participate and send your letter via WhatsApp or text message to the number 0979-958392 and avoid vulgar language. Today's letter to the President reads. Letter to the President. Subject, the Minister of Agriculture. Mr. President, this is not the first time we are talking about the need to reorganize the Minister of Agriculture. We want this ministry to be positioned in a good steady for the both social and economic development of Zambia. Mr. President, the starting point is food security. The setup in the current Minister of Agriculture can't guarantee food security unless there is reorganization. Mr. President, we are already in agriculture season and the farming season does not start with the four of rains. There are a lot of preparations before the planting of rain-fed seed crops, especially maize. Mr. President, maize which is used to produce melamine, which is used in the preparation of Inshima, is a step of food. All countries in the world have a step of food. Mr. President, let's prepare adequately to grow our maize so that we are food secure. But the starting point is reorganizing the Minister of Agriculture. This letter is coming from Stephen Lemba. Farmers in Moflira on the Copper Belt who are still holding on to May stocks have been urged to sell them to the Food Reserve Agency FRA. This call has been made by Moflira District Commissioner Savoy Kabika. Ms. Kabika stated that with a new and revised payment system at the Food Reserve Agency, farmers are now assured of accessing their monies within a short period of time. And Ms. Kabika also assured farmers in the district of a timely distribution of farming inputs this time around. She said farmers should not panic as the input distribution program is unfolding well. Ms. Kabika said this during the presentation of hammer mills to vulnerable but viable farmers under the Food Security Park program. Meanwhile, Copperbelt Province Community Development Officer Sarah Matanda encouraged farmers to see it that they fulfill their food security park contributions as doing so will benefit many other farmers. This is one of them that we are going to launch today. Job well done.
Venerable but viable farmers in Mfura district on the copper belt have started receiving hammer meals under the food security pack program. <laughs> The Ministry of Community Development and Social Services has so far made available four hammer meals for these farmers. During the handover of a hammer meal into Alobuka, Mufra District Commissioner Savoy Kabika aged farmers who are still holding on to maize stocks to consider selling them to the food reserve urgents if are air. August, September, October, November, December, Mwala <laughs> The following day, ba milipira. Cash. Sa, sa, sa. Ms. Kapika also assured farmers of timely distribution of farming imports this time around. Lero no mwaka. Avaleli ma. No mufundo refu maku community development. Mweva alali ma no mufundo uleisa na FISIP. Once a mifundo shirefu makuteko, why? To allow making a show of 